120 miles west of Manila, the ocean floor drops into darkness. The Manila Trench, a 500-mile subduction zone where one tectonic plate is being forced beneath another. It's capable of producing a magnitude 9.0 earthquake, a tsunami that would reach the Philippine capital in 5 to 20 minutes, and it would hit a city of 14 million people with almost no warning. Scientists call it one of the most dangerous subduction zones in the world. The trench hasn't ruptured in over 500 years. Pressure is building, and when it finally breaks, it will be catastrophic. This is the Manila Trench, the forgotten threat beneath the South China Sea. The Manila Trench runs along the western edge of the Philippine archipelago, from Luzon in the north to Mindoro in the south. It's part of the larger Philippine Trench System, a complex network of subduction zones that surrounds the islands. At the Manila Trench, the Sunda Plate is diving beneath the Philippine Sea Plate at about 7 centimeters per year. That might not sound like much, but over centuries, enormous stress builds up along the fault line. Most of the time, the plates are locked together, stuck, unable to move. The pressure keeps increasing until suddenly, catastrophically, they slip. When that happens, the seafloor can drop or rise by several meters in seconds. That vertical displacement pushes massive volumes of water upward, creating a tsunami. The Manila Trench sits just 120 miles offshore from Metro Manila, one of the most densely populated urban areas in the world. 14 million people live in the capital region. Millions more live along the western coast of Luzon. If the trench ruptures, they'll have between 5 and 20 minutes before the first wave hits. We know the Manila Trench has produced massive earthquakes and tsunamis in the past. Historical records and geological evidence prove it. In 1771, an earthquake struck near the Manila Trench and generated a tsunami that devastated parts of Taiwan. Wave heights reached up to 280 feet in some coastal areas, among the highest tsunami waves ever recorded. Geological surveys along the Philippine coast have found tsunami deposits, layers of sediment that were carried inland by massive waves. Carbon dating shows these deposits are 500 to 700 years old, suggesting a major event around the 1300s or 1400s. Ancient Spanish colonial records mention destructive earthquakes and waves along the western Philippine coast, though detailed documentation is limited. The problem is, none of these events happened in living memory. There are no survivors, no photographs, no modern eyewitness accounts. This creates a dangerous complacency. People living in Manila today have never experienced a Manila Trench tsunami, so they don't believe it's a real threat. But the geological record is clear. It's not a matter of if, it's when. Scientists have run computer models to simulate what would happen if the Manila Trench ruptured with a magnitude 8.0 to 9.0 earthquake. The results are terrifying. A magnitude 8.5 earthquake would cause the seafloor to shift by 5 to 10 meters vertically. That displacement would create a tsunami radiating in all directions across the South China Sea. Within five minutes, the first waves would hit the western coast of Luzon. Within 10 to 20 minutes, they'd reach Metro Manila's coastal areas. Wave heights would depend on coastal geography and the exact location of the rupture, but simulations show waves ranging from 15 to 50 feet hitting populated areas. Manila Bay, where much of the capital's population lives, would funnel the tsunami inland, potentially increasing wave heights and flooding low-lying neighborhoods for miles. The economic district of Makati, the port area, and coastal barangays would be especially vulnerable. Infrastructure like bridges, ports, and the international airport could be severely damaged or destroyed. FIVO LCS, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, estimates that millions could be affected. Casualties would depend heavily on whether people evacuate in time. But here's the critical problem. 5 to 20 minutes is not enough time to evacuate a city of 14 million people. There's another factor that makes the Manila Trench threat even more dangerous. The Bataan Nuclear Power Plant. Built in the 1980s on the Bataan Peninsula, directly facing the Manila Trench, this nuclear facility was completed but never operated due to safety concerns after the Chernobyl disaster. The plant sits less than 100 miles from the trench. It was built in a tsunami zone. And while it's currently non-operational, there have been repeated discussions about reactivating it.
to address the Philippines' energy needs. If a magnitude 9.0 earthquake struck the Manila Trench, the Bataan nuclear power plant would experience both intense shaking and potential tsunami inundation. Even in its non-operational state, the facility contains nuclear material that would need to remain secure during a disaster. If it were ever reactivated and then struck by a Manila Trench tsunami, the scenario would mirror the 2011 Fukushima disaster in Japan. An earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear crisis all happening simultaneously. This is why scientists and disaster preparedness experts have strongly opposed reactivating the plant. The Manila Trench makes it one of the most dangerous potential nuclear sites in the world. Unlike Japan, which has extensive tsunami warning systems, evacuation routes, and regular drills, the Philippines has limited infrastructure for tsunami preparedness, especially on the western coast. Most Filipino tsunami preparedness focuses on the Pacific side of the archipelago, where the Philippine Trench poses a more recognized threat. The Manila Trench, on the western side facing the South China Sea, has been relatively ignored. Metro Manila has some of the world's worst traffic congestion. Evacuation routes are limited. Coastal communities are densely packed. Many people live in informal settlements with no access to early warning systems. 5 EOLCS has installed some tsunami warning buoys and seismometers, but coverage is incomplete. Even if a warning is issued immediately after the earthquake, getting the message to 14 million people in under 20 minutes is nearly impossible. There's also a cultural factor. Filipinos are accustomed to earthquakes. The country experiences thousands of small tremors every year. But tsunamis from the Manila Trench are so rare that people don't internalize the danger. The 1976 Moro Gulf tsunami killed 8,000 people, but that was on the southern island of Mindanao, far from Manila. Most people in the capital have never experienced a tsunami and don't know how to recognize the warning signs. The Manila Trench is over 500 years overdue for a major rupture. Pressure has been building along the fault line for centuries. When it finally breaks, it will generate one of the most devastating natural disasters in modern Philippine history. 14 million people in Metro Manila, millions more along the western coast of Luzon. A tsunami arriving in 5 to 20 minutes. Limited warning systems. No realistic evacuation plan. And unlike other subduction zones around the Pacific Rim, the Manila Trench operates in relative obscurity. People know about Cascadia, the San Andreas Fault, the Japan Trench. But the Manila Trench, most people have never heard of it. That's what makes it so dangerous. Scientists can't predict when it will rupture. It could be tomorrow. It could be 200 years from now. But geological history tells us it's inevitable. The ocean keeps its secrets. And beneath the South China Sea, the Manila Trench is one of the deadliest. What do you think the Philippines should do to prepare? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more videos about deep sea threats and underwater disasters, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because sometimes, the greatest dangers are the ones we've forgotten about.